and welcome to this episode of Evergreen Spotlight. I'm Julie Holiday. I'm sitting here with Thomas Fox, and he is the producer of Great Culture, which also encompasses Great Big Talk, which is an evergreen podcast. And he's joining us for today's episode of Evergreen Spotlight. We've been talking, we're like, let's roll the camera. So that sounds good. So Thomas, you're a producer and you're all about bringing ideas that uplift people and inspire. So I'm curious if you can tell us something inspiring right now. Oh my gosh, that's so much pressure. It's something inspiring right now. Everything that ever has been and ever will be comes from the depths of our imagination. Oh. And so for us to try to grab it out of, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I love that's this. this. No, I love it. It's good. There, there's a, uh, I love, I love uh, human creativity in every sense. Uh, so I think that that's like what makes us fall in love with people in general is just, um, our individual creativity. So I love to bring people together and help to like stoke the um, confidence for people to share things. Um, yeah. and, and what's really fun about that is I feel like I do this largely because I need that so much. I, I need to like, I want to, uh, to share more with the world. So mm. there's, there's so much here. So yeah. much. And I want to continue to unpack it because I'm listening to your podcast, Great Big Talk, and it's mostly in the realm of someone speaking in front of an audience and you and you hit record. Is that correct? Can you kind of give us the, the idea behind Great Big Talk? Yeah, Great Big Talk um, is not a thought leadership series. It's similar to what you would see with like a TED Talk. Yeah. Um, but if Shirley Holiday was going to come and do a great big talk, <laughs> it would um, be huge. It would be huge. It would be about 20 minutes. Um, and That's all. A, and there would be <laughs> a live audience. Yeah. Um, and we would be in a really inspiring place, uh, likely, that a lot of people had never been to before. Yeah. And we would learn about you, why it is that you make what you make, and uh, some help for everyone in the audience to figure out how they might be able to make things too. We usually don't like to say that whatever the um, stories are, are meant to be um, like directional, like this is what you, how we do or fix, because there's yeah. a million different ways that you can make anything. We're just trying to create some space for people to open up, share themselves, and let other people be in space. It's like a perpetual per creativity flywheel um, where there's just, we're dumping it in mm -hmm. and it's just helping mm -hmm. people. And you don't have to engage. You could be there and just sit back, but it's much better. It's impossible. Are, uh, I was I able to go impossible. to one of your great big talks. I'm not sure if you remember. Actually, two of, of them. I do. Two of them. And yeah. I left just so inspired where it's just ideas are flowing and it's a wonderful networking opportunity in Cleveland, where you're from. And I'm curious if you can tell us about the the multidisciplinary word that's attached to your show and also your bio. So if we search online for you, it says multidisciplinary. Just curious of what that that word, those words mean to you. I mean, everything, blend, everything blends together. Um, and I think a lot of the most interesting things that people create are at uh, intersections of disciplines where it takes a lot of skill, a lot of time to develop skills in order to um, bring things in. So, like, we'll do talks that might have uh, an architect we had last month and then, you know, we had the director of a film festival another time cool. and then we have um, people that are working on energy companies. Like it doesn't, it's like where is the, huh. these things don't really connect in, except for um, the people have ideas in their head and they want to get them into the world mm -hmm. and there's a process for making that happen mm -hmm. and everyone's process is different. So like, yeah, multidisciplinary mm -hmm. is just that creativity is everywhere. Um, that's that's why I we do this. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, I kept seeing that word, but I love how you say it it doesn't matter really what profession or industry you're in. It can always be like pushing these ideas forward. It's you, really good. It's going to be interesting uh, in anything that you're making. Even things that are simple, you can be like, well, this is this project, and it's just repetitive and over and over. The process of making that is probably pretty interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah. You said that this is something that you need on like a personal, professional basis of like inspiration. Can you maybe tell us a bit about your background and you know why you need sort of like that little I was born oomph. on a rainy Tuesday. Yes, please. Um, the I grew up on the east side of Cleveland, yeah. um, and. For my career, I knew that I wanted to run a business right out of high school, but I didn't know what I wanted to make. Um, I, uh, I thought, uh, as it, when I decided to go to business school, uh, a few years after I left uh, high school, the like advertising made the most sense. Mm -hmm. So I sort of got in and obsessed with branding and the power of. Uh, brands, so like brand marketing and um, all of that was like my area of study. Mm -hmm. But while I was doing that in college, I ran an a cappella group because music. Who is, doesn't? Oh, really? Who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> um, I got that was like That's my. Cool. Yeah. Uh, music became just has always been massively important for me. So everything that I've ever done through my career. I'm always personally like drawn back to music and then f meeting just massively talented people and wanting to put all of the pieces together in order to to make that happen. Like those moments in the show, the show, mm -hmm. um, I live for that. Yeah. Yeah. What is it about branding, do you think, like some really like warm takeaways that we can that we can take from from branding that you've learned along along the way that's important because I agree I think branding is very important no matter what profession you're in. Yeah, I mean, the most important thing about branding is that um, well, it's it's big. Whenever I'm working on a branding project or have worked on branding projects, whether for myself or with other people, um, I never. People tie it into being a graphic design di discipline, and it's not. Um, uh, branding is a social discipline. There's mm. a space that a lot of people will do in large corporate settings of trying to find like values and mission and all this stuff and let that bleed into. But it winds up being like personality and all of the stuff that people say about a person, place, thing. There's a there's a name. Mm -hmm. That name has a cognitive association. This is kind of a little bit nerdy. This cognitive association okay. nerdy with here. Uh, individual words. Those words can wind up meaning t things because of societal context. But then with time, um, the things that they're connected to. Um, there winds up being meaning that's derived. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, when you talk about it for in terms of like business, it's always about building trust. Um, so if you have repetitive uh, things that are said in competitive, uh, um, repetitive experiences, mm -hmm. those wind up building trust. Yeah. And then people want to engage with things that they trust. Yes, and people are engaging. Like for your golden hours or you know, even your great big talks, I mean, you'll send out what I perceive as like just a couple of emails or, you know, here's here's what's going on, but you have major amounts of people in your audience. Can you maybe speak to how you're building this trust and how you're getting people in the seats, like truly sitting down and watching watching the show? Our marketing is terrible. Um, I don't agree. I feel like it's really good. Yeah, I'm really proud of it in that I feel like it's bad. Be it's good because it's bad. <laughs> we bad we don't do, there's a lot of people that might do things within our the space that we are <laughs> and are like, your promotion for your event, your mm -hmm. ad, your marketing communications. I should yeah. say we have, we don't have a lot of marketing communications. It's like um, I'll put out two pieces of communication, yeah, one or two social media posts. But there's okay. a lot of trust that's been built up yeah. over a long time yeah. with an audience that just knows that what they're going to come. There's a, a very, very good chance that wherever you go, there's going to be magic happening in yes. some way or form. That's what I then, experience, like truly magic and just the inspiration. Continue, please. It's that creative flywheel. Yeah. I mean, I all I have to say is this is the person that's going to be there. Yeah. This is where we're going to be. This is the time. 
And it just feels so much bigger than who, like whenever you're there, it just feels so big. And you're just sitting there like, oh, I could just sit here forever and just listen to this person talk. <laughs> and like, and it just, it just feels like such a, a, a warm community, truly. It's cool. Yeah. When I do, I have a, a one particular piece that I'll do that's a little bit more than those like standard marketing communications. Yeah. And I'll like, I started, um, when I started the talk project, it I didn't want to have a meeting in order to have a meeting. So it's like, if anybody wants to help with things, and you've been on these emails before, it's like, I'm going to send one email, and that's what the planning is going to be. Yeah. And because of it winds up being uh, overwhelming. If it feels like work, then right. a lot of people don't want to yeah. do it, and I don't want to do it, and there's too much time. I'm just like, I just want to go and mm -hmm. have... I, could, I just want to get everybody together. Mm -hmm. So I, when I started writing these emails, I didn't know that it was eventually going to turn into me spending uh, a few minutes. I, would, I'll, I love this so much. I write narrative. Sometimes they're poems. Sometimes they're stories. Sometimes there's like my personal history that's like connected, whatever the themes or speakers or stuff. But I just, I just spend a little bit of time and that is not a quick, here's the information. Mm. If you're gonna jump into that, you have to be invested. Mm. You're gonna come in and you're gonna spend, you know, five, 10 minutes with me. Just, I mean, I could, I could record. There's a lot of things that I could do with those and I don't know, I may. And those are just for your own personal collection, or are you emailing or posting those? No, those are, those are like my, my closest, there's like team, it started out with just like team members yeah. and now it includes all of our members and all of our uh, members and partners. I'd say that I send the letter to about 500 people once a month. Wow. And um, those, like that's really the core of all of our events and things. There's like a public space mm -hmm. that people will catch into this, but there's a really strong engaged following within uh I mean, we've had I've had over a hundred speakers that are some of the most influential wow. people in the city. Wow, totally. Uh, yeah, so they're all they all get a letter from me once a month, and it's not just like here's the information. Like they could sit down and spend a yeah, spend like over a few lunch or over coffee, head. right? Like or like for yeah. themselves, like sitting there and reading it. Yeah, sometimes you'd like to think. Others. What's that? I said sometimes they're better than others, but yeah, it's like you like spending the, having a cup of coffee. Yeah, and reading more about what's going on with Thomas. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, not wanting it to feel like work. Is that one of your personal, like, mottos or like ways to view what it is that you do? Like, no, if it starts, if it starts to feel like work, do you stop? Like, like what do you <laughs> <laughs> one of my best friends in the planet is behind the camera right now, and he's like, we hey, Tom doesn't want to work." He's like, "Yeah, that's pretty accurate. He does stop. Yeah, <laughs> he just doesn't work." Um, that's not true. I like, well, I do. I well, um, whatever you're doing is working. I mean, I mean, it's like the not working is working. I work. A, I work a massive, massive amount, but I also have a ton of time dedicated to downtime um, I, I have to and even like downtime mm. what it feels like might be mm. unproductive mm -hmm. I just view it as like is that like not near your phone is it like like watching television is it going out for a walk like what does downtime look like for you um, downtime looks like um, anything that's not sending emails yeah yeah Emails are hard, right? I, I I avoid going into my email system pretty pretty hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, all the health, the health and wellness stuff that you, everybody's working on. I don't think that there's that much new in that space right now. A lot of people get to be junkies for this like wellness stuff, and I'm like, I just want to have lunch. That's yeah. and then yeah. go for a walk, like break away, and really actually look at the sky and be in the in the nice weather. That happens not very often in Cleveland. Yeah. No, it happens all the time in Cleveland. Stop of that. Of course I it does. Had, Golden hour, of I course. I uh, had the, um, you're not the, the, I've told this story a few times. A friend of mine just moved back here from San Francisco, and we are overlooking uh, Ohio City from mm. his apartment. Mm. And he's like, oh, I'm not looking forward to this. And I was like, I have had the top down on my convertible. Yes. 
Yes. Every single month, January, <laughs> several times. We had 60 Stop. degree days. February, 60, 70 degree days. March, That's 60, amazing. 70 degrees days. So I mean, you're it's more like, wonderful. like, let's just like, if it, like, just for today, like, if is it 60 degrees today? Let's put the convertible top down and let's. Make oh yeah, the most I mean, if it's it. warm enough, the top's coming down. Yeah. <laughs> the car, yeah. and I'm cranking up the tunes. I like this. And we're going to, uh, we're gonna have a good time. I like that. Yeah. Let's talk about the music for the show a little bit, because what sure. I noticed is like, you know, you do the intro and there's a little music interlude, which I actually really enjoy. It's not anything like blasting or long, but where would, where was that music? What's been at that inspiration? Did you make, did you make that music? Music for the show? Yeah, like music for the, oh, yeah, like for the, the show. Oh, like the title. Um, so that's my friend, um, Steven Diaz, uh, composed that and he and I had written some music together. I've known him for a very long time, um, maybe like 15 years at this point. He lives in North Carolina now, mm -hmm. but he had put together this song and we had sent some things to each other. And I was like, dude, can I use this for Great Big Talk? Oh, I nice. want this. And he was like, oh my God, for real? Like, of course, yeah. Um, so we, we broke it up. There is. There's actually a, I don't think that he ever, ever released it, mm -hmm. but that's a, there's, there's lyrics to this song. It's, oh my goodness. It's very good. I can cool. send it to you sometime. I would love to hear it. The, that's, that's where it came from. I wanted, um, in the context of branding, um, I wanted you to be able to hear, see when you turned on Great Big Talk. Yeah. I wanted you to know that you were listening to Great Big Talk just by the fact that there's um, some sentimental moments that were being shared by someone, and the swell of this music, followed by this star, bum bum bum. Like if you yeah. if you if you watch if you watch listen, yeah. it's better to watch. Um, you'll know that it's great big talk. Is that on your website? Is that yeah. where people can like yeah, actually that's like? Com. Okay, gotcha. So. Yeah, I mean, they're all published on YouTube, but okay. you can find them all on yeah. It's Great to Come. I love that. Um, I'm curious of the title, like how the spelling of great. Can you explain the G-R-E-Y-T for not only, and, and your company, like, you know, great culture? Yeah, I just don't want people to think I'm very smart, so I... You I, just misspell. It was just I a misspell? Just, Is you know, that really what it like, was? Yeah, so I see he misspells things all the time. Yeah. It creates the right expectation. Sure. It's your brand. Like, you're, there's going to be typos. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I'm... There's a long time I had had... I wanted to make a big music festival in Cleveland, and I still do. I feel like that's part of the, the path. The pieces just aren't all in the right place for it. Cool. Um, so I took and went like hammered on like this, the way things come together for me now, almost everything girl, uh, great culture is like, it's raining, water pours down at the top mm. of the mountain and it goes to mm. wherever it goes. I'm mm. really trying not to like push too hard and mm. more just like let things fall like in. Allow, um, yeah. That's not everybody goes that way, but mm. I find that in the being this is my life. Like, I can't. Uh, I can't actually just push through and just like just keep going, just keep doing. I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm gonna take a I'm break. I'm not pushing. Yeah. I'm just like letting things fall together. Mm -hmm. So there was a. I mean, that's even within the name of of great culture. That um, how it wound up coming to be. This festival I was making. In 2016, I'd put together a brand. It was a very like compelling um, story. I I wrote a, a children's book, and it was like from within a narrative. It was it was like big. I like did a lot of work to create this whole thing, and then there was some uh, some negative response to associated things to the words. Which is something you have to watch out, walk, watch out sure. for in branding. Yeah. This is like sure. societal the association of what it with the colors, with the logo, has with nothing the to font, do with you like, or what you yeah. say. Yeah, what, what already things. is existing with, with, with those things. Continue. So yeah. uh, I felt like I was um, pushing against a. Um, Despite having all of this good work that I put in, I like personally was like I believed in this so much. It felt like I was I was pushing, so I was like, 
that was a hard one to just like mm. break up with. Mm. Um, but I was like, okay, I'm gonna give this some time to sit. And I let it sit and I was producing programs without an, a banner, like an overarching umbrella for music, arts, culture for two years. And um, I was searching for a lot of things. The mm-hmm. list is of names that I considered is massive. Um, I wound up mm-hmm. deciding I wanted to be able to say Cleveland in a way mm-hmm. without saying Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And because I don't want this to be about this space, this the city. Like only like you don't, maybe I don't want to be. I want to be able it. to produce things all over the sure, world. Sure, exactly, um, right. But being inspired by Cleveland, we have mm-hmm. a massive. Even though it can get nice, especially we have more grays the days than sh- Seattle, um, and it's just unbelievably pewter uh, all the time. So it's it's gray, gray skies, um, and then with some effort, it's gray to great. Uh, that's what was meant there. Oh, okay. Um, I put it together. I liked how it. Uh, I liked how it felt. Mm-hmm. I liked how it looked. Yeah. Um, and. When I bought the that's great.com mm-hmm. domain, I was like, oh yeah, no. Like there's I, no competition probably, right? Like there's not a lot of competition for that for for that name. Uh misspelled G R E Y T. Um no, there's no competition at all. I don't think that yeah. It's really I, it just feels like me at this point. I think it's awesome. Yeah, thank I you. I think it's great. Truly, Aww. yes. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, so if our listeners, if our audience are ever in the area and they can check out A Golden Hour because it's truly so beautiful and it's really at a sunset. Can you tell us a little bit about Golden Hour, like the, the live event? I started as a party with friends uh, during, it was like very tail end of the pandemic after okay. vaccines and everything. Yeah. Um, went, got together at a photography studio that had a rooftop, watched the sunset with artists, musicians, um, you know, producers, uh, photographers, videographers, like creative industry, um, friends that I've worked on projects with. So that was that's all I wanted to do. And I had a, f- a friend who was a DJ do that. It rained. It was a double rainbow. Mm. Um, it was beautiful. So cool. So uh, That space, though... If you want to go up to a rooftop and watch the sunset with a full production, like, live band, and then we invite in some of the top emerging chefs in the city and uh, all my buddies who are bartenders. Like, we set up pop-up bars. It's a scene. Um, It's uh, sometimes if we have enough room on the rooftops that we go to, we'll invite in some fashion designers who are nearby, and there's, like, winds up being... A, original pieces of mm. like clothing that's the stuff that you can discover there's just a lot of fun and there's six hours long um starts at five o'clock and then goes all the way till 11 wow. and so the scope of the day there's mm-hmm. all this representation of change which feels wow. good i am i don't know any anybody who's like yeah i'm so happy where i am right now i never want anything to t-. Yeah. like change is is massively important so that that transition of the day and the program has this ramp up of having some uh, talks about technology and then some like acoustic music and then a full production band and then a dj and lights yes. and, and it's wow. all it just kind of ramps up so um, cool. it's a perpetual representation and feeling of like change yeah um and golden hour is the best light everybody looks beautiful at golden hour so don't threaten me with a good time with good lighting come on yeah just come getting good lighting (laughs) and uh meet some other people in good lighting yes yeah I really want to wish you the absolute best. I think you're only on the up and up and you're such a creative mind in the area and beyond. So congratulations and good luck. No, truly. Thank you very much. You're Julie. welcome. Check out Thomas Fox and his podcast, Great Big Talk. It's an evergreen podcast podcast and you've got to listen to it. Really great speakers. You'll be inspired. And if you ever can, check out Golden Hour as well. It's his live in-person events. Thank you. Thank you. Boom.